Good morning, everybody. Let's learn something new this morning. Um, I had some questions on Tex EduChat when I was on there about Dropbox, and I realized that there were some things about Dropbox I had not shared. So let's talk a little bit about how I organized my Dropbox to make my room as paperless as possible. So you can see at the top of Dropbox, I have a couple things that start with at, the at sign, that pops them up to the top. Um, that's a Gina Trapani trick. She used to be with Lifehacker. And I have a really important database upgrade we're doing at the school. I always want that to be at the top. Junk drawer is actually where I download every single thing from my web browsers on all my computers because I have um, Dropbox um, installed on four different computers. Now I do not have all those these files on every computer. For example, at school I don't have my books. My books don't show up at school. I did a custom installation of Dropbox and so I just put the stuff that I wanted to have at school. Now my archive folder, this is where all my um, details and stuff for my classes go. So I just wanted to have it all in one place and I kind of have that numbered and organized. Rise Above is kind of an interesting one. Um, these are the things that I want to read to help me rise above and be excellent. So I put all my Adobe Acrobats in there. Now the reason I do that is when I get on my iPad, if you go in Dropbox and you hit the star button, it will actually download those files and I can read them offline. So that's what those are for. I have Sharpens the Saw and this is a little bit different. This is, okay, I have 10 minutes and I want to improve myself. Or when I buy certain ebooks or things, um, I'll put them in there, and that's for sharpening the saw, and that's from Stephen Covey. Okay, and then you can see I have a lot of other files. Now, one thing I want to mention is that a lot of apps like IFTTT and Notarize and Paperless, they all make their own folder in Dropbox. Now, I really, really don't like this, and I've tried to move these folders into other stuff, but they always keep coming back uh, since I do use those apps. So you kind of have to just leave them there in the root directory, but this directory is a bit longer than I really like it to be. And now I have all these shared folders that I have. Um, some aren't, some are. But I've made a demo folder. Um, I didn't want to work on my live student data because I kind of protect my students. But I've made a demo folder. And you can see that I organized by year um, in here where the Westwood High School. So I have that in there. And I just made another class 2019 demo that's kind of a similar class. Now I keep these for a long time. I don't even teach these students anymore. But I still share that Dropbox, and you'll see why. I actually have a folder called for Senior Slideshow. And once my students have me start in eighth grade, if they have anything great that they want to put in the Senior Slideshow, they can put them in there. And then once a month, I'll go through, and I'll put those up on the server in a place I have for their future Senior Slideshow. Then they have pictures from eighth grade up. And this is a nice little thing to do in Dropbox. Uh, you can also do it, I want to mention, drop it to me. Drop it to me is something you can set up so people can upload files and give it to you, and it's free. Uh, so if I have anything private or confidential that I want uploaded, pictures or fun things or whatever, then people, I'll ask them to do it and drop it to me. Okay, so let's go back to our demo folder and look at how it's organized. So I have the senior slideshow. Any handouts that I want to give the kids, I put in here. I usually put them in PDF format so they can open them on their iPads, their droids, their whatever they want to open them on. Then I have our turn in folder. I'm about to get there. And then I have videos. Now videos, I have it here because the students are taking photos and videos on their iPads and their iPods and everything. And it's really easy to upload those. Now you can do pictures with Google Drive, but you cannot do videos. So the best way to move videos in and out is to have a video folder. Now I don't want students to use this folder if they're just doing and uploading it for themselves. They should just put it in their own Dropbox. But if they're sending it to another student, then they put it in videos and then the other students are instructed to take it out. Because remember, they only get two gigs free. So you don't want to go over that. So this video folder is constantly in, out, in, out. But it's our system for moving files from our iPhones and our iPads onto um, our devices. So here we go. Um, these are some of my friends from Star Wars. These are my students I have kind of set up here. Now, I, in my turn in folder, this is where everybody turns stuff in. Now, right here in the folder, this is everything I need to grade. Now, I'm not going to be grading this right now, so I'm just kind of going pretending like I'm grading so you can see how I organize it. Now, I only want PDFs. I call it ePaper. I want my students to print to ePaper, and I want them to save their original files to their computers. Now, I've got some errors here, and I've got some correct stuff here, so let me show you how we go through this. First of all, I don't want the actual files in here because if we did, it would tempt students to 
copy each other's work and I don't want them to do that I want them to do this on e-paper instead which of course you can convert uh, PDFs to Word and other things if you really really know how but this is going to be beyond the scope of most of my students so um, I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them in the error folder because I'm not going to grade those okay because these are the actual files and I don't want the actual files I don't even grade them if they turn in the actual file and I want to get them in the habit of doing it properly now here's another one I could open it up and I could see their name but it's not turned in properly because they haven't signed their name so I want to teach them to sign their name electronically so this is going to go in the error folder too now if students see that it's late or it's not turned in they go in the error, error folder they handle it they pull their document out of the error folder and they save it back in here well now I have um, four things to grade now if I was grading these I'd actually double click and open them usually I grade these on my iPad um, but I would grade them now notice I have a certain system I want them to type the lesson number L39 L37 and this is for a keyboarding class kind of as a demo so I have them type the lesson number dash last name first initial so Han Solo here did L37 dash solo H okay and that puts it in alphabetical order so when I want to grade it in my grade book everything's in alphabetical order so pretend like I opened up Han Solo's work and I graded it now I'm gonna take him and drag him to grade it okay and it syncs with the kids and they see that it's graded too and boom it's graded now if say I had something in a lot of annotations and a lot of issues typically what I would do is I would actually take this file out of here I would annotate it and typically I would email it back to the student so that that annotation if there was a lot of feedback or a lot of edits or problems which in this class there's usually not um, because I'm constantly looking at their screens and I know kind of if they're on task and doing this properly before it's even turned in um, and that's just part of monitoring the class so anyway I would annotate and I would probably email it back to the student but since it's correct boom there it is and I can see that now I have nothing to grade in here okay and I'm constantly writing this stuff I do have my grade book on paper before I type it into PowerSchool there may be other ways to organize but it's not um, it's not quite as simple now um, I've had people ask me I'm gonna cut these and, and move these back here I've had people ask me well what happens if somebody deletes something now let me minimize here and I've got Dropbox open and you can see that my Westwood 2019 demo is here now it's not I don't have the cute little people here because it's not shared I'm just doing this as a demo okay so I'm hitting this here and I've got all my stuff here and then I have turn in well let me bring back up here and let's say mister that Obi-Wan Kenobi is acting up well actually Obi-Wan is acting up and he deleted Leia Organa Solo's stuff and press delete okay so it's gone now oh dear I can't grade it what am I gonna do ah uh, okay so it's not gone though now you look here and it's gone here but there's this lovely little file that a lot of people don't realize is there called show deleted files so I'm actually at dropbox.com I signed in with my name and then I come in here now you can see everything that has been deleted and I can come in here and right click now I can look at all my previous versions of this document or I can permanently delete which means it's gone forever ever 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 like if somebody put something in there that you never wanted anybody to ever see in a million zillion years you could permanently delete it or you can hit restore now when I hit restore boom it goes back in here and before I can even go back over here you're gonna see that it's already back so you're not losing anything in Dropbox you've got all those revisions and such um, now I know there is a little bit of a difference between the free version and the premium version which I do pay for the premium version for me but not for my students um, but uh, you know I've always had access to these features and they're there and you can of course move stuff around here and that sort of thing um, and it works now if a student ends up on another computer and they're not on theirs of course they can come here and they can upload so I have cleaned everything up and I'm graded and I dealt with my naughty student and now you can kind of see a little bit about how I go paperless I know there are better ways to probably do a lot of this stuff but I hope this real-world example helps you and remember that you matter and make sure that you're always learning new stuff because teaching can really be exciting if you're always bringing new practices in the classroom have an awesome day